each other, bro. Monkey noises. Monkey noises, and we literally have Dude, psychedelic hallucinations. I was, I was actually thinking about like words and sounds, um, while while we were having our monkey, um, and it dawned on me how much it is like an instrument. How much sound actually feels when you say it as you playing an instrument like the word understanding it's not like yeah it's just understanding but when you sound out the the uh, syllables and everything yeah it's like this weird flowing system and eventually the words start or the words sounds start each individually meaning something to you so you could take and make up new words based on the different like combinations of syllables that you understand I, oh, you, tree. yeah oh, tree. dude poetry and it's just words are so cool dude words are absolutely r- r- ridiculous like something like alliteration um the like uh ppp yeah dude it's <laughs> it yeah it's just words are so cool i wish i understood them better um but I, I'm not somebody else, like, uh, go out there to find new words. They'll come to me when I need to know them. You learn what you want to learn, man. Mm-hmm. Don't think it should be forced or expected of you. Yeah. So I, like, we were having the conversation about the school syllabus. And I actually think the forcing of needing to learn some things is a definite hindrance. Definitely endurance. A hindrance. Oh, a hindrance. Yeah, a hindrance. Like, one of the things that I recently learned is a big problem with the school system as it is right now is just how early it starts, dude. Oh, dude, seven. Seven, bro. In England, it starts at four, Johan. You're lying to me. Why? I'm not lying to you. I'm serious. My, Why? All of my nephews and my niece start, at, start school at four. Do they have to go to school at four? Yes, they have to go to school. That's so That's fucked up, dude. dude. I I think America starts at nine most of the time. Between like twenty minutes past seven and like nine is the the latest that it really starts. Dude, I've always thought that. Oh, are you talking about like in the morning? Yo, yes. Oh, like, Yo, oh, bro, what, what do you mean? mean? In the I thought you meant age. I thought you meant age. Oh, bro, that's time. why. Like, when you said in America they go when they're nine, I was like, Yossi. Shit. <laughs> nine a.m. Nah, nine a.m. Dude. Uh, nah. I I think in, I think pre primary. I don't know if they have pre primary in America, but primary starts at seven or six. I mean, we had like a uh, clear school. Yeah. Pre-primary. Which is like, yeah, pre-primary. Like, and I went there when I was like four years old. Yeah. And my mom sent me there for what she called uh, which directly translates like safekeeping. <laughs> because I was a little terrorist that my mom couldn't deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom didn't want to send me to pre-primary, so I only ever went to grade one. Savage. Bro, yeah. pre-primary was the most brutal life experience i've ever had <laughs> getting getting chased by a bunch of other fucking kids and then like tripping and falling on the ground and like knocking your air out and being like what is why what is why? life why am what i lying here yeah bro <laughs> up. So cool mode, bro. four years old dude i'm like you're lucky they don't hand you a shield and a spear but if you were in sparta you'd be way more yo fun. dude like that's you have to fight a six-year-old Yo, dude, they, they start yeah, they start <laughs> fighting when they start walking. That's how they did it in Sparta. You, if you weren't, uh, like a certain size or something and a certain build, they just, as a baby, they threw you off a cliff because you wouldn't be useful. But, um, then they start training the people at the age of four or five when they're like properly could start walking and, uh, I don't know what the age blade. it was, but at some point, it's... like nine or 12, they dude. just throw you out into the wild, bro. For yeah. A year. You have to survive. Yeah. <laughs> if you come back, yo, dude, like the Spartans were hardcore for that reason.
Yeah, there we go. Ayo. Dude. Ayo. Hey welcome, welcome Me everyone. Me and Christian is using the same microphone right now. So do excuse us if anything sounds a little bit wacky. Or if it's just me talking, or it looks like it's me talking. Yeah. <laughs> Where was Christian? He said nothing. He's so quiet. Is he sick? Uh, Can you hear him? Not, I, I used to be able to hear him, and now I all of a I sudden can can't. I, I'm here. Oh yeah, you're here. Yay. Oh yeah. Oh dude. What a week. What a week. Yesterday was so sick, bro. I slept so well last night. Like, it has been, it was one of those sleeps where you wake up and you're like, what year is it? Um, how long have I been out? And it just feels like it's been a week, dude. It was, it was so nice. I slept till like 10 today. So that was 12 hours. Fucking 12 hours, dude. I don't know when the last time was I slept for 12 hours. Pretty good for your soul if you feel sick just sleep all day yo dude sleeping is so good for your body like it's i was i always used to think that sleeping was passive but it's passive kind of for your brain but it's super active for your body like your body does all of its repairing all of its all of its metabolizing dude like your mind is pretty fine as well dude like when it comes to like activity like going through all of your dream cycles is very important I learned some interesting information today where, like, during our youth, our, like, you know, pre-12 years old youth, we actually have extremely high levels of REM sleep. And then as we kind of move out of that, you know, into adolescence, we have, like, more deep sleep and we actually go to sleep a little bit later. And that is literally so that we can call slash reestablish all of the, uh, like, neurons or pathways as most important. So like sleeping is a is a big thing just to humanity, dude. And like sleeping enough is very important. Yeah, dude, it's really important. I used to yo, dude. I used to have such a bad sleep cycle. Like when I was at school, it used to be bed at three, wake up at six, go to school. That was like my average thing. It was deadly. Don't do it. it that's how I was you... doing. I was doing almost the same thing, but like you know, one a.m. kind of sleep time. Then you just like you you can't turn off, dude. It's almost impossible to turn off. Dude, the worst part is just when you don't get to do a full REM cycle or you wake up in the middle of a REM cycle, your entire day is ruined. Like, <laughs> you're just so tired and you can't function. Nah, dude, sleep is too nice. I do believe that's actually something that happens if you sleep too much. You know, you, you like almost start the cycles over again. Yeah, you, you absolutely find do. in the middle of a cycle that you don't get to finish and then you just feel more tired for sleeping more. Yeah, that's... Dude, that's... also discussed how you have so many more dreams when you sleep longer. Yeah? It gets tiring. Yeah, uh, dude. I wonder actually if your dreams have... Because I've woken up from a dream and been exhausted. Like, oh my god, what did I just have to do in this dream? Your... Mm. When you're writing a math exam in your dreams. <laughs> you have to write a math exam. <laughs> nah, dude, the worst one is when you... When you go th uh when you get lost like i had one of these dreams where uh, a couple of my friends i don't remember who it all was i think chris you were there i think i you were there but i don't remember who else was there and it was this like i went and suddenly we were just walking in the bush like we were camping and then suddenly we were just lost and we spent six days going trekking through the wilderness trying to get back sleeping in caves fighting off wolves and eventually I woke up and I was just like, oh my god, wait, none of that happened. Oh my god, as I just was so exhausted after the, like, eight hours of sleep, bro. Dreams are too cool. Like, it's so interesting as well, you know, how you can find yourself dreaming things that kind of feels dreadful. You're like, oh, fuck, why, why are these things happening? And then you kind of deal with it. Like you're, mm -hmm. you still kind of go along with it, you know. And then you wake up, and then there's a sense of relief, like, oh shit, all of that stuff that I dreamed was actually just in another place. Dude, I was just your fact that it's so believable, dude. That your brain is so easy. I don't want to say tricked, but your brain is so used to interpreting realities that it's just like, yeah, that was that was real enough. That felt real. I had emotion during that. That was real. 
and then you wake up, bro. The curious part to me is the fact that our brains literally downregulate our prefrontal cortex when we're dreaming. So not only does our brain kind of fill in the gaps, you know, like kind of accept things, but it literally dumbs itself down to be able to do that more efficiently. Really? Yeah, dude. So your brain is actively processing, no, I don't, yeah, processing information a little bit slower and not as I think, logical. I think, yeah, maybe not as logical, not, not necessarily slower, maybe just a little bit less critical, I think would be a good way to say it. That's why when somebody starts flying in a dream, you're just like, yeah, that's okay. Hmm. The dreaming when you is... start flying in the dream. Dude, when you start, no, when you get lucid dreams, dude, nothing is as cool as a lucid dream, bro. You're just like, I want this building to collapse, and the thing just falls into nothing. Bro, no, lucid dreaming, lucid dreaming is where you're, like, truly, truly a god. And the thing has been curious to me, and, like, you're saying that, but what if you lucid dream yourself into something that is potentially horrible? You know, like, one of the experiences I've had like that, I was dreaming, and I found myself almost like in a state of sleep paralysis. And I was aware I was dreaming, like almost like in that lucid dreaming state, but I was dreaming an environment of my room. Almost like my dream was trying to convince me that I wasn't dreaming. I've, I've had something like that where I woke up and it felt like I was actually awake, right? But I look around my room and everything is green. Everything looks exactly as it was before. <laughs> it's just like this hue of green. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but it took me a second to process i was like is this is this normal the thing that like, i don't know if this happened to you as well but the thing that bothered me the most like it was almost like i was paralyzed in that state where i was like oh i'm dreaming but i'm in my room but i'm sleeping so i'm not moving and then realizing oh i'm not moving i was like oh i can't move because and i was like it was like being in my awareness of like a waking state but dreaming and I, and I couldn't figure it out, and I started screaming. Dude. And I realized, you know, after I could actually wake myself up, that I was doing that to myself. So, like, you're mentioning, like, this almost, like, godlike state. <laughs> it, can, it can go both ways. Yeah, it absolutely can. Do you know why you get sleep paralysis? Like, do you know? Yeah, like, so that you don't hurt yourself yeah. like running or stuff like that in a dream. Yeah, so your body switches off movement while you're sleeping. So what happens is your brain kind of wakes up. Then. No, 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 no. That's your brain. Not That's your body moving around. That's you being asleep and moving your body around. That's some people just don't turn their body off. But for most people, your body turns off while you go to bed so that you don't, in a dream, run and, like, kick your foot open. Because I can yeah, imagine there's a, difference, there's a difference between the the want to move because you're uncomfortable and then shifting positioning versus animating the, the like running state or the trying to fight someone's state that isn't a dream. Yeah, dude, imagine you're like... sleeping next to your partner and some people do. You've, I've, I've read some stuff where like some people kick or like punch in their dreams. But like imagine you're just chilling and suddenly your part partner kicks you in the ribs trying to fight off a villain or something that they're dreaming about. I don't it's think real, that would be bro. that fun, dude. It's very real. It's, everyone knows. Dude. Yeah, it'll happen sometimes. At least it's not just like a continuous thing that over happens over and over. Dude. I want to give you... You strap the person down. <laughs> dude, you wake up dude, and you're just tied to the bed. Like, Life-changing dreams. Yo. Where suddenly you wake up and you're like, cool, I want to quit my job and go diving. Just an example, you know. Mm-hmm. Dude, um... Nah, I... You're having a good thing, you know, everything is alright. So... And then suddenly your brain is like, hmm... Uh, I want to tell... I, I find it really funny that you bring that up, because I am currently reading Matthew McConaughey's autobiography. And inside, uh, inside this autobiography, he says... That any time he ever has a wet dream, he takes it as a sign that whatever he's doing needs to take a break. And he'll book himself to a random remote place in the world and just go sit and do something there. Like, that's how he wrote his autobiography. He had a wet dream, so he, he booked has a wet dream. So he took a one-way flight to the middle of the desert and sat there for four months in a place writing his autobiography. And then came back with the book. That's just wow. what he does. 
really traumatized by his wet dreams, bro. Nah, dude, I think it was for him. It was like, okay, uh, I've had this. I'm kind of tired then of whatever is happening right now. Uh, I want to take a break. I think that's how he treats it. But this man is weird, dude. Not in like a bad weird. He's just your his life, bro. He, it's kind of incredible. There's too much to talk it's about. Strange thing to read Matthew McConaughey's autobiography. My mom gave it to me because she said it was pretty good. He's a really cool guy. I'm not gonna lie. Like, he's kind of I mean, out the nice there. Thing about, and the nice thing about writing your own autobiography is you can make yourself as likable as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I don't know. I, I think... I think there are a bunch of celebrities out there these days that are actually kind of incredible people beyond just like what the fame and the glory bring. Like that's something that's so impressive to Keanu me. Keanu Reeves is like that to me. Dude. Yeah, dude. When you can manage to keep your head while the world, while you have millions of people throwing themselves at you. Not just that, dude, but the stuff that he's been through prior to the success he's seen, man. Nah, he's a lovable man, bro. Damn, dude. People are too cool. People are so different. Everybody's so unique, and everybody has so many things to offer. Individual labyrinths. Yo, I I saw your uh, podcast or your video last yesterday. I think was titled "Building Your Own Maze" or something like that. I. Uh, They're like something, something maze. Something yeah, something maze, maze I dude. Remember. So yeah, that. About magic. That what? was that was the the, what, the dude, monkey knight. Yeah. Um. The monkey knight. The monkey knight, dude. Uh, your dude. Dave built a maze. Still stuck in my brain, dude. What uh, a to fucking. To you friends movie. listening right now, if you want to see a movie that is, is quite out there. It's it's watch... out there, but it's the best movie I've ever seen. Show yeah. three grams of mushrooms and watch Dave made a maze. <laughs> Come back to me, tell me what you <laughs> Yeah, what come you back feel. and tell us what you thought. How, sh- how sure you are, you know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I just had the intro, dude. Yeah, I wanted to build something, and I might be partly responsible for the people that died here. <laughs> tertiarily? Tertiarily. <laughs> tertiarily. tertiarily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, movies are too cool. Do you remember what I've been thinking with that movie proved to me, dude? Is... We don't really care what the movie is or how it's styled or what it's used. We care about the message behind it way more. Like that movie used cardboard, bro. Fucking cardboard and paper. And it was more influential in my life than most of the big budget movies I've seen. Oh, dude, like this, like no Marvel movie holds a candle. The this, candle, like, the dude. The intellectual depth that this movie kind of like. Yo, dude, when when you at one point have to be like, Jesus, five layers, bro. You digging five layers at once here. Things happening in the background. Yo, I dude. remember that scene of the guy leaning against the wall. <laughs> dude, yeah, him just after after seeing the the chick get her head, bro, and he's just leaning there having an existential fucking crisis, dude. What a movie, dude. That movie made me laugh so much. But it's like, it's, you gotta pay so much attention so to much, it. Dude. There's so much, So much happening. The, the cuts, dude, The cuts, like, it, it literally... It's, it's them in a single apartment, and they've created this maze out of cardboard boxes that is as like one of these super liminal type of... Uh, how do you explain that? Yeah, leave geometries. it there. Leave it there, Yeah. Dude. Super liminal then, geometries, dude. So what that means is basically larger spaces if inside smaller spaces, or vice versa. Yeah, it's just it's just such a good movie. I don't want to. We don't want to spoil too much because like you have to go into it with like what the fuck is happening. Yeah, we watched it like literally. I had it on a list, and I was like, this movie feels like it's calling to me. Let's watch this one, and then it just like kicked our asses. Yo, dude. It kicked my ass, but it proved things to me, bro. It made me appreciate shit again. Dude, like, I literally felt my brain, like, working. I, actively working. I sincerely it. wish for friends and loved ones the way that movie portrayed friends and loved ones. Uh-huh. Dude. Where's that, that beard at? Where's that beard at? It's beards on my face! <laughs> Dude, no, that... 
That was like the reason I think it stuck out to me is because it was so real. Like all the dialogue, everything. Yeah, some of it was a little corny and some of it wasn't the best acted, but that was the point. It just it was, it was so real, dude. I'm gonna stay focused. I must stay focused. I need to stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is like there this happening like there's this asking him to stay focused while you feel like you have absolutely no focus whatsoever about what's happening dude dude man i was so cool movies uh, are too I know sick that, like our podcast shouldn't be about movie reviews and stuff like that but i i kind of want to bitch a little and uh say an, un- uh, say an unpopular opinion i thought dune was kind of meh like, the story, the story wasn't that intriguing. I mean, like, of the amount of people that have been raving about it... It got so much fucking love, and I'm wondering why. Yeah, why didn't Dave Built a Maze get this much love? This movie is, like, four years old. The thing like, is... I didn't, hear, I didn't hear anything about that. The thing is, and we have to be honest with ourselves, people like CGI. I like CGI. I like big-budget CGI and watching a worm eat a fucking giant... Spice Miner. Yeah, but even the yeah, Earth wasn't that. The cool. spaceships, the spaceships were cool. Like that was the like the spaceships and architecture and environments is the thing that I appreciated the most. I I think that the problem is, and this is what happens over and over with people attempting to make movies out of books, is you can't. You the only way to transfer a book into video style is via a series. One way you can make it like 20, 30, 40 hours of content. Yeah, it did feel rushed and shit. Like so much of it was just glossed over. How does the voice work? We don't know. What? The, mm. How does Spice work? We don't know. Like there's so much that they just couldn't talk about because otherwise the movie would be six to seven hours. So, yeah. And that was just part one, dude. So I genuinely think people should really stop trying to make movies out of books. Just make a really good series. Game of Thrones already proved that you can. Just I mean, don't get... No, 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 no. They got I greedy. Mean, they got greedy, yeah. dude. The yeah. people... The, <laughs> dude, the, <laughs> the, first two, the first four seasons were spectacular, yeah. dude. I agree. And then... And then the writers, dude, the writers themselves said that they were tired of it, but they were being paid 40 million a year per series. So they were like, we're going to finish it. And that's why it just gets progressively worse because they're like, we don't really care anymore each time. So. It's so sad. Yeah, the book weren't finished yet. It was Mm -hmm. such a masterpiece. It was my favorite series of all time. And then it just got shed on and shed on so yeah you need a like if you, you want to watch you get... could have made an art piece for a, a saga that would have lasted through the ages mm-hmm. and instead now it's just dead mm-hmm. i i get saddled with people calling me john snow for the rest of my life dude fucking asshole you know nothing i know nothing dude i just find it do you guys know you, know, you guys probably know what chekhov's gun is i learned about the like thing recently it's it, Chekhov's it, gun. Chekhov's gun. So Chekhov's gun is a writer's uh, analogy or like explanation for you can't introduce something and then just let it fizzle. That's the yeah, point. Dude, if you start I something, like that happened with like Dune as well yesterday. Kind I hope. Something. I hope some things will get resolved in the second part because we can't be too angry about a unfinished movie. But like with um, Game of Thrones, you can't spend four seasons setting up the White Walkers and then kill them off in one stab. Dude, that or like the, the Men of No Faces, bro. Mm. Like, like that shit was so cool and they were just like, okay, no more. No more, dude. Like, just so yeah. much of it just died because they couldn't be bothered to write an end to it. So yeah, look, uh, also Chris, you being, you not wanting to bitch about stuff, what do you think this podcast is for, is to talk about whatever the fuck we want. Um, Jon think... Snow should have won. <laughs> Jon Snow should have won. Dude, I did, I, have been Jon Snow. I have, uh, to be honest, I actually haven't finished the entire season eight. Eight? Yeah, the yeah. last season. Oh, the, okay, yeah, you. No, season Good eight. Good luck. Nah, I'm, I'm, sorry, not, I'm not going to ever. John, Johnny Boy should have been king. We all know it. Everyone knows it. Man. 
they shot on they shot the bed this is a really good analogy Tar for he was targaryen he was a nice guy he died already <laughs> spoiler alert nice guys finish last that's why I treat you like trash? <laughs> <laughs> Instead, they made this dumb ass paraplegic fucking psychic bitch Dude, king. Dude, Bran Dude, could have been he's the worst king in existence. Dude, Bran could have also been so much more. What about the Raven shit? All of that just got hucked uh, under the what bus. About, Dude. What about the girl that literally pushed him for like four seasons? Mm -hmm. Like they just like completely washed over. Goodbye. Her. Goodbye. Yeah, it's like oh, <laughs> away. <laughs> Dude, it's oh, wait, just, okay. this is, it's the best, best, like, explanation for don't get greedy for things. Dude, if you no longer care about the project, give it to somebody that will. That's just, I know the money might be nice, but fuck your money. You actually care about your creation more than the man money it's gonna give you, dude. Dude, that's the problem these days, man. It's like, people aren't creating for the creations anymore. Mm -hmm. They're creating for capital gain, dude. I kind of hated that Danny fell into madness. And that they were just able to kill a dragon with a fucking ship crossing. Yo, dude, I didn't even, like, I know everything that's gonna happen, but there is, what, I understand the White Walker killing a dragon. That was sick, dude. Like, suddenly, this dragon's never been killed before. It's never even been hurt. And it just one-shots it. That was like a, oh my god, oh, look at cool. what the fuck this thing can do. And then they you have, them as well. and then they just shot him with a fucking crossbow, bro. Bro, I'm sorry, that's so fucked up. It was shock, that, that was like shock content, basically, dude. It was like, oh, what if we do this? Oh, yeah, but that was one of the dumbest scenes in season 8, bro. You're a fucking dragon. You're flying really high up. And fast. How do you not see those ships, bro? How do you get hit? Come Why on. don't you dodge? Dude, imagine uh, how hard it must have been to use a ballista to shoot a flying thing without computers, bro. Oh. Try to manually do the calculations, bro. Never. I'm sorry. You'll never that do it. Distance, bro. That was some artillery fire. Nah, dude. If you think about how hard artillery fires, my dad always used to, because my dad was an artillery person in the war, um, or the conscription that you had to do. Um, and then anyways, he used to say like the problem is when we when they used to shoot at like two or three kilometers. If you're a degree off, you're ten degrees off at the end. So. Like, you shoot, and you end up in somebody else's farm instead of the range. That's all I'm imagining with fucking a ballista at, like, 400, 500 meters, dude. Maybe even further. No, it, was, it was dumb. I was very, very angry at the end of the season. There, there are so many alternatives that could have happened. I would have been happy if the White Walkers had won, actually. Yeah. yeah it's such a Game of Thrones ending. Yeah, just everyone dies. White Walkers just kills everyone. Yeah, White Walkers come south and slaughters everyone. Fuck your dragons, fuck your armies. Fuck your throne. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to work together, now everybody dies. Yeah, dude. I feel like that's, that would have been a very Game of Thrones ending. Otherwise, you know, the more fan-pleasing one, where Jon Snow becomes king because he's Targaryen and Stark, and obviously, like, the one that's supposed to be the leader. Yeah, went through the trials and tribulations to be leader. Dude. Like, loved by the people. At least now you know never if you ever if I ever spot something like that happen in your book, Crystal Punch in the dick. No, it's not gonna happen in my book. It's not possible, bro. I actually care about my outcomes. Good. Good. You also need to send me a book now. I wanna read it. We didn't get it <laughs> I need to I need to write a lot more, Johan, before I send it yeah. out again. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, but like a lot of planning needs to go into the final battle. That's gonna be half of the book. Yo? Okay. Fair, fair. Yeah, bro, the, the first half to build up to the one night. The one night? You're gonna Dude. have one night of a fight that is gonna last like half Dude, a book. I, for the first time in the recent uh, game I played, where it was uh, House of Ashes' uh, like, uh, anthology series, but basically, it's spread over one night, and it's 12 hours of game content. You can- yep. a fuckload can happen in 24 hours. Like, a obscene amount of shit can happen in 24 hours. So, I wanna know how you drag it. I'd love to know. It's gonna be a lot of fight scenes, a lot of... Uh, Death. Questions asked. 
a lot of flashbacks, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're gonna get to learn about the ancients. You're gonna get to learn about I don't other mysteries that I've kept hidden from everyone. Fuck yeah, dude. Books are too cool, dude. I like writing and creating stories is just one of the most insane things that we can do. For example, is Obol really dead? I I don't know. Is he? I don't know. Turned into a vampire. Oh, that would suck so much. Oh no! You would, like you would, that most... would that would be the most Chris thing ever to do. Oval comes back. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Things. Nah, he walks into the city, and Oval is just like one of the head of the cities now. Oof, dude. Would be a cool power struggle. It would yeah, be an insane power struggle. Oval? I thought you were dead. I thought you were dead. Wait, why are you? A why do I smell? Ugh, what happened? Dude, dude, no, I, I want to, I so badly want to try and write an interactive story, like, one for, like, the Telltale game style, but, you're that, it's so much planning. Dude, writing something from scratch, like Dune, for example, like you said, 10 years for the ecology. Dude, 10 years for the ecology. I mean... I'm not spending 10 years on the ecology of the book. I'm spending a lot of time on figuring out what the message of the book is. Uh, one of the main messages is that immortality really, really sucks. I wish I could make that obvious for everyone out there. Yeah. It's going to be great for a couple thousands of years. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to fucking love it. And then when you hit the, like... 8,000, 4,000 year cycle, and you're just like, everything is dead. Everything you've known, Everyone everything. Everyone I know is dead, everything I love is dead. I've seen it all over and over again. I've seen the patterns and the cycles that humanity goes through. And then you can rest, dude. Having known. Yeah, but you can't die. That's like the problem. Like, if you- if you're As a true immortal being, yeah. But, like, even if we figure out how to make our bodies immortal, I still believe we won't be bodily bound. Let me say it that way. Well, wait, so you mean, like, our minds couldn't do it? No, again, so, like, let's say we figure out CRISPR to the point where we can, like, just code our DNA so that our telomeres don't degrade and our cells reproduce perfectly every time, no cell degradation. Technically, then we would be immortal, at least bodily, because mm. our cells would duplicate so perfectly that we wouldn't die. We would also have to figure out cancer, because technically they're going to have the same powers. Technically, we can use cancer as a solve for immortality yeah, as well. Yeah, cancer is a problem of the mentality. Come again? I think it becomes a problem of mental stability at that point. Mm. But that's what I'm trying to say. So, like, even, even if we figure out how to do that bodily, we're going to have to move on and through this still with the same mental kind of ability to recall. So then you bring into that like um, computers, having a computer system remember some of your stuff for you. And then you're going to start to build patterns, as we said. But again, as I've said, like if, if I get to that point and I'm in that type of body, and even if I, for, for instance, you know, like jump in a... A vat of blades. My my body is still going to want to <laughs> want to go to like reassemble me. I would just like submerge myself in a pool of liquid dolphins, dude. Or direct message times. <laughs> <laughs> direct message times, dude. Just trip the fuck out for the rest of time. Not just for the rest of time, dude. But you're going to, I think, lose the body. Your mind is just gonna be like, oh wait. Your, dude, I I genuinely wonder, bro, what would happen if you ingest like two hundred grams of direct you would message come time. Back a demon. I don't know if you'd a come demon. back, dude. I yeah, think you'd lose yeah, yourself. Your, your soul would leave your body, and then a demon would inhabit it. That would be trippy. Dude. That dude, that would be. That sounds like a cool show. <laughs> Yo, dude, actually, as like. And then you then you have to find a way back into your body from the like quote unquote demon realm. Or have to battle that demon for you, your body, oh, dude. You I wish luck on that demon, eh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I wish luck on that demon. Bro, that's the point we're trying to make. It's like 
everything, no matter what we do technically, is going to be a divine experience. So, like, we're talking theoreticals here right now at most. Even if we get to live that long, even if we don't get to live that long, we're still going to be living. And that's the part that's beautiful. Like, I just want to do that for longer. That's my only, like, reasoning for wanting to live longer. Dude, humans have been trying to do that for so long. Like, most of the start of alchemy was the pursuit of immortality and the perfect substance that would the give that. You know, like, the hilarity of that is, is that we're closer to it now than ever. Mm -hmm. With, like, just, like, figuring out how to manipulate genes. Dude, I saw this really funny thing. I was watching a guy try and extract explosives out of gold or turn gold into explosives and <laughs> yeah, like uh, al actually alchemy yeah but like transmutation and so what he did is he obviously doing chemistry and everything but it, like in 19 or in 1592 the first like written work we have about somebody creating an explosive from gold made use of like human urine and a bunch of other stuff that they thought would work yeah. And he walks and he's like, yeah, we're not going to use any of this. Takes, like, uh, ammonia, drops uh, flakes of, like, uh, gold chloride or something that he'd made, stirs it a bit and produces the liquid that he that this book made use of, like, for an hour's extraction and everything. And he's just like, yeah, I would have been a god in 1500s. They would have worshipped me. As he, like, flicks around the gold liquid that the alchemy has been trying to do. For fucking years and we're just like yeah we know it's chemistry these chemicals go together they do this like we were talking about the magic of just our world bro we are magicians and gods technomancers dude mm -hmm. technomancers dude like i was Literally. actually that while was the funniest thing dude people were struggling with technology and then you you, you just have an intuition for it sometimes, you know? You come in here, you click twice there, and move it around in a circle, and then suddenly it works. It works, People dude. People look at you funny. <laughs> dude, you know the Mechanicus from 40k, Chris? I sometimes yeah. feel like a Mechanicus, where I'm just like, I don't know, I'm gonna spit at it and it'll work. Um, I'm not really sure why that works, but yeah, look, the program now runs. Dude. Dude. Code, uh, man. We were talking about code as well. You know, how code and being able to code technically puts you in a position of creation that is unfathomable. Dude, it's like we were saying, me and um, we were talking about it. Just if you've ever written a program, you have done something that 99.9% .9 of humans have never even dreamt is possible. And if you've coded something that's a picture, that number is way less. And if you've coded an AI, you are like in the 10,000s of people that have ever coded an AI in their life. Like, just the ridiculous shit that we're dealing with now, man. Also, I'm sorry, I will be right back. Me and, take a shit. Me and Christian looks at each other from across the table. We've been smoking uh, almost 90% Malin? Malian? Malian. And like ten percent tea. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very what? nice tea. It's been so nice. Like we're we're smoking me and Christian right now, a ninety percent million, ten percent tea leaves blend, and it's so nice, dude. You know, like it's it comes back to me that you don't need that much. Mm -mm. And I wonder, I wonder what it is, because you can handle that much, but it's almost like you have to arm wrestle yourself into handling. Yeah, it. you do, dude. And, like, you have to force yourself to enjoy it and stay sane enough to actually do whatever you need to do during the day. Like, also, I'm not gonna lie, the million tastes great, and you're helping your lungs while you're smoking it, dude. It's just... It tastes so nice. It's almost sweet now that I, I smoke it, bro. Like, uh -huh. a sweet, sweet and then sour type of taste. Dude, I've been thinking, like, I'm gonna really start working a bit more to understand plant medicine. Cause that shit's too Dude, good. I would be so fucking interested in some um, herbology or what do you call it? Did Not you, herbology. But like, yeah, like herbal medicine. Yeah, herbal uh, medicine, shamanic medicine. Botany. Botany? I'd be so interested in some botany, botany right now, bro. 
Oh, yeah, understanding plants a bit better. I mean, I mean, like, botany would be great, but what you're talking about, at least if you're in the same vein with what we're talking about, like, knowing which plants have certain medical benefits, like, herb... Uh, I'm sure you learned that in botany as well. Not really, dude. Botany is more like learning the, the, yeah, the basics of those stuff. You know, how they look. So herbology. Not herbology, I think it is... I actually have a, a little email for that. Witchcraft. Witchcraft just straight It's witchcraft. just witchcraft, dude. Actually, witchcraft. Oh. I mean, the crazy thing about it for me is the fact that we have these plants, you know, that produce chemical, like literal chemical... What's the word I'm looking for? Spectrums that are good for us. Like, how do you, like, explain stuff like that away? Like, the fact that... Um, dude. Million has these freaking benefits to your lungs, for example. Dude, like, who would have been able to guess that smoking something can actually help you? Dude, Earth is literally just one giant living being. We just it's keep herbalism. kidding out. Dude, we just keep kidding ourselves that it's not. Everything is so connected, dude. Every plant, every animal. Like, if you look at the sea's ecosystem, dude, the entire thing is dependent on plankton and zooplankton. Like, and then it just builds up and up and up and up and up. Eventually, you can have blue whales and sharks that eat anything else. Like, it's, dude, it's just one giant fucking living thing. And we're a part of that living thing. That's the dude. trippy part about it, dude. It's like, we, we kind of consider ourselves these separate entities within this larger thing that is alive. And I wonder why we do that. Do we do it for, like, our own sanity? Is it just the ego trying to... Keep itself separate. I think, uh, I think it has to do with the fact that you just forget. You want to be separate. Yeah, it's just you interpret things different, but you want to. You kind of forget that everything you own that looks unnatural comes from a natural product. I think that's what happens. Like a car, a car feels unnatural. But it's just a bunch of natural chemicals shoved together into a certain arrangement to make us go fuck quick. So I think that kind of creates this disillusion. And the fact that we live in houses and not in a cave, and when all we've done is we've built ourselves a cave. Hmm. A labyrinth, a maze. Dude. Yeah, man. Like, our ways of perceiving this reality and our place in it, I feel is one of the biggest things that it's almost like this filter that we attach. You know, and I, and I think back to the stuff that I was thinking at one point in my life and how limited my life experience was as a result of that, but I also didn't know. You know, yeah. it's like you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, dude. It's the, it's the one curse. It's, it's, the... it's this... Like, now I'm curious as well, Johan, and this is now, like, the moral dilemma I'm sitting with. Like, if we... Like, I want, I, even though I hate the word, you know, if we enlighten someone to this other side of it, can't you then potentially be hurting them as well? Because maybe that's not something they want to know about. Yeah, I do think so. So I think it's like you should never, ever, ever try and convince somebody of something. Like, I'd never, never give them a book for them to read about something. Never, because that's forcing it. What, what, what should happen... And the way it happened with you is somebody like Terence was just talking about it. He didn't, he's never said you need to join this. He, it's always like, uh, if you are more interested, try it. It's always like, it, you always need to present it as a choice for somebody, I think. Because then you at least know that they're thinking about doing it or joining in or at least in some capacity interested. Because yeah, you could really hurt somebody, I think. Especially if you just, like, blow open their idea of reality to the point where they're not really sure what to do anymore. Yeah, they can't function anymore. Uh-huh. People are just too complicated. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just people have experienced so many things that... And sometimes I just think it won't help. Like, there, people are set in their ways, and if you try and force something, you're just doing... Yeah. I wanted to say you're doing what the Nazis did, but that sounded really <laughs> bad. But it, to a to a percentage it is true. 
Like um, it's it's weird you say that exactly because my dad makes that analogy, dude. He's like, oh, you believe the things you believe are right, but Hitler believed the things he believed is right oh. as well. And I'm like, bruh, please bruh, stop dude. preparing me slash so bringing Hitler, Hitler into the conversation. So did Gandhi, so did Buddha. Yeah, dude. It's just, I, I, I don't think you can use that for mundane, like, conversations. Oh, exactly, dude. dude. And my dad, like, he's done it. I'm not even joking. Like, multiple times, dude. Like, when, you, when you're selective. Five, five plus times he's brought that exact, like, uh, analogy back. And I'm like, bruh, stop. Yeah, no, dude. Stop doing that. Stop. You have to, like, the thing is, there is a very big difference between helping someone, and I don't mean forcefully helping them, trying your best to present a better idea, and enslaving a fucking country, dude. Like I, I find it. I find using Hitler as a example is a bit over the top. That's why I didn't want to use it. But yeah, words are weird, dude. Words are weird. We make sounds at each other, bro. Monkey noises. Monkey noises, and we literally have dude. psychedelic hallucinations. I was. I was actually thinking about like words and sounds um while while we were having our monkey um and it dawned on me how much it is like an instrument how much sound actually feels when you say it as you playing an instrument like the word understanding it's not like yeah, it's just understanding. But when you sound out the the sil uh, syllables Understanding. and everything, yeah, it's like this weird flowing system, and eventually the words start or the words sounds start each individually meaning something to you. So you could take and make up new words based on the different like con combinations of syllables that you understand. Uh, oh, you tree. Yeah. Oh, tree. Dude, poetry and it's just words are so cool, dude. Words are absolutely r r ridiculous. Like something like alliteration. Um, the like, uh, PPP. Yeah, dude, it's. It, yeah, it's just. It, words are so cool. I wish I understood them better. Um, but I, I'm not somebody else. Like, I go out there to find new words. They'll come to me when I need to know them. You learn what you want to learn, man. Mm-hmm. Don't think it should be forced or expected of you. Yeah. So I, like, we were having the conversation about the school syllabus, and I actually think the forcing of needing to learn some things is a definite hindrance. Definitely endurance. A hindrance. Oh, a hindrance. Yeah, a hindrance. Like, one of the things that I recently learned is a big problem with the school system as it is right now is just how early it starts, dude. Oh, dude, seven. Seven, bro. In England, it starts at four, Johan. You're lying to me. Why? I'm not lying to you. I'm serious. My, Why? All of my nephews and my niece start, at, start school at four. Do they have to go to school at four? Yes, they have to go to school. That's so That's fucked, fucked up, dude. dude. I, I think America starts at 9 most of the time. Between like 20 minutes past 7 and like 9 is the, the latest that it really starts. Dude, I've always thought that... Oh, are you talking about like in the morning? Yo, yes. Oh, like, Yo, oh, bro, what, what do you mean? mean? 4 a.m. in the morning. I thought you meant age. I thought you meant age. Oh, bro, that's time. why I like... When you said in America they go when they're nine, I was like, Yossi. Shit. <laughs> 9 a.m. Nah, 9 a.m., dude. Uh, nah, I I think in... I think pre-primary... I don't know if they have pre-primary in America, but primary starts at seven or six. I mean, we had, like, a uh, clear school. Yeah, pre-primary. Which is, like, yeah, pre-primary. Like, and I went there when I was, like, four years old. Yeah. And my mom sent me there for what she called... Uh, which directly translates like safekeeping <laughs> because I was a little terrorist and my mom couldn't deal with me. 
<laughs> no, my mom didn't want to send me to pre-primary, so I only ever went to grade one. Savage. Bro, yeah. pre-primary was the most brutal life experience I've ever had. <laughs> getting getting chased by a bunch of other fucking kids, and then, like, tripping and falling on the ground and, like, knocking your air out and being like, what is... Why? What is why? life? Why am what I lying here? This? Yeah, bro. <laughs> grow up. Survival mode, bro. Four years old, dude. I'm like, you're lucky they don't hand you a shield and a spear, bro. You're in Sparta, you'd be way more. Yo, bad. dude. Like, that's. So they have to fight a six year old? So Yo, dude. They... they start walking. Yeah, they start <laughs> fighting when they start walking. That's how they did it in Sparta. You, If you weren't, uh, like, a certain size or something and a certain build, they just, as a baby, they threw you off a cliff because you wouldn't be useful. But um, then they start training the people at the age of four or five when they are like properly could start walking and. Uh, I don't know what the age play. it was, but at some point, it's... like nine or twelve, they Dude. just throw you out into the wild, bro. For yeah, a year. you have to survive. Yeah, it's <laughs> if you come back, yo, dude. Like the Spartans were hardcore for that reason. Dude, I feel like no, it was ju- they were hardcore, but like the Koi son. Bro, those people were fucked up as well. Like, they used to be your initiation for getting in, for becoming a man, was they gave you a short spear, and in Afrikaans you call it a knopkiri. It's like, uh, basically it looks like it has the bone that slots into your knee slot. It looks like that at the front. And then it's... It's a a bulbous end to a a stick. Yeah. Basically, blunt, and then they force up. they give you that blunt force object and a short spear, and you have to go hunt a lion, and then you have to bring back the lion's head, and that is how you get initiated into the Khoisan as an adult. Bro, imagine fighting a lion with a fucking stick with a knob at the end. Bro, this I kind of for some reason there's a part of me that wants to do this. Like, yeah, I can do that. For I want to try. A part of me that thinks that's not possible. Oh, they did it! It was like an average tradition, so it wasn't like it was impossible. The way they said you had to do it was you have to wait until the lion pounces on you. At which point... Huh? Yeah, it's you. It's just you, bro. You have to wait until the lion pounces like, at lion you. Lion is hardly ever alone, man. Usually as a prize. You have to, like, go find a, a lone male. That would be my, my suggestion. What you then have to do is you, as it's pouncing, you have to take the blunt object and smash it as hard as you can into its face and then stab it in the back of the brain. That was the only way you'd probably survive it. So, like, the people were brutal and ruthless and fucking tough, dude. What this body can do when you need it to is fucking nuts, dude. I'm still struggling to picture myself fighting a lion with a wooden stick and a sharp spear. They fucking did it, dude. (laughs) Dude, I want to try in VR, dude. When we have VR, I want to go fight a lion with a stick, dude. Bro, like, technically you can do, like, realistic (laughs) information as well of that VR lion. And I spoke course on swords. Dude, it, ma- it was either the Zulus or the Khoisan. It was one of the African tribes. I can't remember exactly. But, um... I... Dude, just imagine you could do full haptic feedback. Like, the lion mauls you. And then you fucking wake up out of the VR. That would be so terrifying, dude. It would give you a pain threshold unlike anything anybody's ever had. But... Bro. Like, it- just, like, walking casually in public, you know, having mauled... Having been mauled by a lion like 50 times in the last week. And the dude like, in the last. Hello, random people. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, do you imagine how different your understanding would be of the world if you can just like throw yourself out of an airplane, smash into the ground, and then you wake up, you're like, ha, huh, that's what that felt like. It might, might make you a little bit reckless. Dude, dude I think so. I think it would just like, you'd, you'd be so fearless. Nah, dude, VR is, VR is gonna be ridiculous. Full haptic suits is gonna just be a different experience. Like, I wonder, man. Like, I, I think full haptic suits will eventually be a thing. But I feel like they won't be a thing for long. Yeah, see, when I say haptic suits, let's also include haptic, like, brain feedback. 
I don't know what you what you'd call that. I have to as soon as you have the brain feedback and you're able to manipulate the synapses to such a degree where you can simulate feeling and smell and hearing and all of that, um, yeah, then it's uh, you you can go into complete virtual reality with all of your senses included. Yep. Imagine you have settings to be like, I want to feel this much pain when I get stabbed. Or mold by a lion. And then you get those mad lads that are like, yeah, full experience. Full experience, dude. Like it's like the um, uh, Cyberpunk's brain dances. Where, dude, I still can't believe Cyberpunk has you. The first brain dance you ever experience is where the dude gets shot in the face. Imagine how fuck, like, how that must feel to feel what it feels like to die. Because that isn't like an imitation or anything. That's like the sensory feedback caught as the Your thing as can tell the difference. Yo, dude. I don't know, bro. If you do like direct sensory input, I don't know if you could tell the difference. So, Johan, like let me riddle you this, dude. If you have a direct message time input, you can. You know that there is no difference, but you can tell the difference. Ooh. But that's still an external increase of chemical. It's not your, like, neurons being fired for you. That's also true. You know, and I think it, it's going to be determinable by, you know, the maybe like a user interface, if you will. Yeah. Just in the same way that you can identify with the character you are in a VR experience, you could identify with that character and feel as if you are the character and then experience things through that and still, you know, not have anything bad happen, if you will. Yo, dude, do you know what it would be like? Imagine if you could take a video game um, and you could code the experiences that that character has directly into sensory output so like you could play a game as if you were the character you become the character you literally become the character bro imagine how much more like how much more life experience you could get like i'm what i'm personally thinking about now is horizon zero dawn where you're playing as like a character that goes through fucking turmoil loses her mother does oh no doesn't have a mother gets raised by a far just a single parent that parent dies like all of these emotions figuring out what happened to the world talking to people i feel like you're dude you could you could create experiences like that have never been seen before we're getting closer and closer to it man I'm now so excited for that. That must be some of the most insane storytelling methods ever. It's a little too much on my plate. It's like I still want them to retain their own body emotion while going through the story. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. But like, I, well, I wonder. I wonder how you could. I wonder if you could just like tag the emo, like the centers. Of I don't know how it works. Like you'd have to understand the brain so intricately. But if you could just like tag the part of your brain that's loss, and then however the p the person experiences loss, he would experience or she would experience it. It wouldn't be like I give you sadness, but I like present you with this loss. Sounds like so much effort. It would be, but it, like I wonder. Maybe much, much later. And, yeah, this is futurism. This is, like, genuine, far-into-the-future ideas. Dude, I'm just, I'm too excited. Shit's too cool, man. Bro, the fact that we're living in the future, man. Mm -hmm. like, the, the conceptualized future that people have been talking about, we're actually living that right now. Dude. And it's not like it's a measly future. Like, we have fucking ridiculous tech. Three D printers. Three D printers are insane, dude. Insane. 
And I like whenever I watch these engineering channels and you see all the equipment they use to build and weld and uh, CNC and all the other stuff that they make use of. Just some of the engineers, dude, imagine you could take uh, Archimedes and just show him a warehouse or not Archimedes, sorry, uh, uh, Da Vinci and show him like an uh, engineering lab or something. Bro, if you show Da Vinci in a, in a warehouse, he's going to be like, where the fuck is your class? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the bare minimum. They're like, yeah. It's efficient that way. He's like, yeah, have you no shame? <laughs> have you no, have you no aesthetics? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I feel like he would be horrified and then it's also so want, to get, everything yeah, want to get into it as fast as possible as well. Like, m making stuff, if you will. Yeah, dude. Where's your class? <laughs> <laughs> have you no shame? Dude, man, there's been too many smart people. Not enough. Yo, dude, people, people have to try hard to be smart. They have to be very smart to be smart. You have to somehow survive and then be smart. You know, the funny part about being smart, like there's a dude that had something like a 263 IQ. He lived a life of suffering, dude. Like, when he was age three, he could speak something like two languages. Age three, dude. When he was six years old, he was finished with high school. Wanted to go to college. Didn't allow him because he was too young for it, dude. So at the age of nine, they allowed him in. He finished, bro. He was like, uh, like this free kid his entire life. Died having accomplished nothing, dude. Nothing. Died suffering, dude. Like, literally feeling, like, socially inept and not being able to, like, tolerate social events. That's why we're reforming our idea of intelligence, bro. Exactly, dude. It's not just school smart. That dude, intelligence is too much. There's too many variables for intelligence. It doesn't make sense to me. You have a doctorate and now you're respected as a renowned intelligent person. No, all it means, if you have a degree, I want, I want everyone, you can study. That's all that means. Yeah, you know how to read. Technically. You know how to read and you know how to memorize. That's about it. You learn some understanding, you learn how to learn more, that I will say. Critical thinking skills. Yeah. But anything else? Eh. It, I won't teach you how to be a good person, I won't teach you how to be socially acceptable, like, socially accepted how to talk to people how to it will won't teach you life skills that's your that you have well, to figure out it does have some really dope classes on like ethics and morals and philosophy yeah but, but that's that stuff you don't need a class for that dude. you don't necessarily need a class for that you don't need a class for most of the things dude i don't know some things you do I don't I don't really want my doctor to just have worked everything off the internet. That's a little scary. It's happening, bro. <laughs> it's already happening, dude. Like I can guarantee you our friend Josh is most of his doctor studying is happening on the internet right now. Man. Yeah, that's very <laughs> true. That's why I still think a true haptic feedback surgery simulator for doctors would be so incredible to have. That would be very, very useful. Because imagine you could get, like, your doctor can go and do your surgery before he does your surgery. Because what happens a lot of the time is you they can't teach you everything in school. So they teach you the theory behind it. And then doctors get to an operation room and they do a knee surgery for the first time ever when they're an actual doctor. So, like, imagine now instead of doing that, they can go beforehand, do a full knee surgery, but like, okay, I understand this, and then come do it on you. Dude, not just that, but I don't believe that surgeries will be done by human beings that much longer. I think they'll be supervised, but I don't think the actual surgery will be done. Yeah, uh, dude, like, the thing is, technically, we're already using these robot arms to do surgeries on people being operated by human beings. And all of that data is being recorded and being fed into those, like, artificial maps, dude. We're literally making these 
super great dance and they're getting better and better with literally each each second dude each year dude they're getting more and more data to be trained on yeah dude, and dude. A, a robot doesn't make mistakes dude pinpoint accuracy wish was the unlock he's eating a meth cookie what? <laughs> he's eating a what it's, no, a, it's, it's a normal cookie. cookie. Ah. It's like, it's like like normal white bread cookie on the outside, and then it has like this sugar, like liquid sugar that was poured on the in the middle of it. Literally. It horrible. I Literally mean, like, liquid sugar, like you know, it like it was technically melted sugar, and then it like solidified into something that looks like meth. Fucking horrible. <laughs> He's not enjoying it that much. And why is it he doesn't eating look it? That good because it's sustenance. Shame on you. He wants, he wants to have the shits again for another week. It's like, yes. Give it to me. Yes, yeah. I will not eat proper food. Have some abo and toast. Yeah, he has some abo and toast and tomatoes as well. Uh, Are you guys gonna have pizza tonight? I don't know. You better, dude. Pizza's great. Order it. Yeah, order from Smacko. Order from a place called Smacko. It's, uh, they always have two-for-one deals. Oh, a hun- hundred and thirty rand for two pizzas. That's actually an Uber Eats. Yeah. Is it an Uber Eats? Yeah. It is. Thank you very much for educating us. So, a hundred and thirty rand is about ten bucks here in South Africa? Yeah, ten ten dollars. Maybe, maybe a little bit less. Maybe even, like, nine bucks. Maybe eight bucks. Somewhere in that region. Eight to ten. Um, like food, like me and Christian was stripping out about how expensive like groceries are, but you know, comparatively to other countries, we still have our ingredients provided to us dude, pretty cheap. W- all of the fresh shit, less as well. All of the fresh shit we get in this country is grown in our country. We pretty much import. We import so little food, dude. So little. That's why it's such good quality because it's all grown here and moved around here. Also, nothing compares to our meat. Our meat mm, is so yeah. good. What? Oh. That's gay, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. that. Just to give your friends some context, me and Christian have been talking about just like these societal understandings of how we're supposed to do things. Like sitting in the room, sitting in Christian's living room right now, there's a bunch of poems around us, a bunch of drawings he did, you know, and like by certain dad standards, like a son that writes poetry, society has this thing of like, oh, that's gay. You know, you're not supposed to do that because it's gay. And it's this, it's this weird thing, you know, like we literally have this kind of pent up thing against <laughs> We have this pent up thing against everyone else just because you know, we we feel like that is some sort of uh, attack upon our masculinity, or you know, showing a sense of the side makes you, uh, in some way, feminine. Yeah, dude, but you are feminine in some regard. And masculine, exactly. Yeah, you dude. should be. It's a, it, it's a balance, dude. Like feminine energy is staying clean, staying tidy, looking good, smelling good. Dude, yeah, no, I don't get the people that are like, I'm not gonna be feminine in any regard. Fuck you, bro. You're literally ignoring half of yourself. Maybe not half, maybe like 20%. Hold up, why is there a flippin' distinction with this feminine and masculine energy bullshit? Why is it being clean, why is being clean and tidy and looking nice a feminine thing? It's more of a feminine quality than it is what we would call traditionally masculine. Like where I say masculine is more of like, uh, fights or, uh, it would be another one. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Confrontational, things like that. I don't mean that in bad regards. I just mean it's more on... It sounds like the bad guys here. Nah, the confrontational doesn't need to be bad. You could be confrontational in an incredibly loving way. What do you think interventions are? Like, a con- what are? Interventions, like if somebody's doing... Oh. Yeah, like, I, I, the only reason I bring it up is because it there is this, like, feeling towards a certain energy that is applicable in each and everything that we do like it's definitely not traditionally manly to grow your hair so 
Yeah, it's just an after god that I mean it. Well, I think back in the day, a lot of people had long hair. Yeah, back in the day, definitely, because it was way easier than cutting it the whole time. Or you could argue that people were just cutting their hair as you know regularly as possible because it was a mission trying to keep it clean. That would be what I thought. I feel like one of the the few people that wore their hair long were the Vikings, but they were they were like proper. I don't know, more advanced people. Like they combed their hair, they washed every week. Dude, I I always I had this joke. Imagine you're a uh like what was it a a seven hundred AD cent or seven hundred century woman in England, and these macho big ass motherfucking men walk up in onto your beaches they're comp they're clean they have they bathe they comb their hair they're they're actually like everything you want in a man and you're used to living in england where they made your father and brother his little bitch yeah um and then you live in england where they bathed once every three or four months because they thought that was where sickness has come from they yeah dude it's just the ancient times we really didn't understand. Hygiene, man. Hygiene, Hygiene is one of the biggest things that humanity actually figured out that kept us alive. Need to be clean. I mean, they did studies on, like, primates as well. They did studies on primates as well, and they found that even primates have a sense of cleanliness and has hygiene to them. Like, they won't eat... For instance, like, if there's food... Just food, uh, they'll they'll like take it, you know, no chill. Then if there's food with poop close to it, they'll be kind of like hesitant towards that. And then if there's uh, food with like only poop on it, or like poop directly on it, they'll completely like avoid it. In that way, kind of showing us that there is a clear understanding of hygiene. Yeah, and then it. sometimes they will like still wash their foods as well, you know, trying to get any debris off of it from the the place that they put it down on. Dude, primates so, are so incredible to me, dude. Like, they're so close to us. They have, they have maybe, like, a couple hundred thousand years to go. Maybe a bit more. But they're getting there. Like, it's so intriguing. Dude, the fact that you could teach a gorilla sign language. Bro. There's an there's a arguable understanding of it that they don't actually understand. They just associate. Mm, but that's a form of understanding. It's not true I understanding. Mean, like, I want to read you the longest sentence ever signed, dude. Then you can see what I mean. And I, maybe we can end it on that. Longest. Sign. It goes. Like this. Where is it, man? Here we go. Give orange me. Give eat orange me eat. And then the longest one is 16 words long, which is give orange, me give it orange, me eat orange, give me, uh, eat orange, give me you. You know, like that's, that's how they try and communicate. So like they understand you and they understand orange and they understand give. But, and then they're like repeating these, like seeing in what order is going to click for you. Give me, give, give orange, me give, eat orange, me eat, give me, eat orange, give me you. <laughs> yeah, see, I I agree. It's not true understanding. It's most definitely not. But it's like, it's, it's definitely. Oh, I don't actually know, dude. Have you seen those videos of like people teaching their dogs to use buttons to communicate, like sound Again, buttons? It's association. Yeah, it's absolutely association. But I I always wonder how deep you could get that like understanding. Like if I ever get a dog, I want to see if I could do it. Like all you do is you put a button. That says food next to food, and whenever you give them food, you touch the button. So that they like, when you press that button, I get food. And eventually, I wonder how much you could get, like, and understand what your animal is thinking. It's definitely not going to be, like, to any high level of understanding. But I don't know how deep they actually understand. It's really. I, I wouldn't underestimate dogs. Man. Yeah, They're dude. Smarter than humans, I know. Dude, those things are too clever. Like, sheepdog, dude. Dogs that can let your dude, they no, they 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 fuck clever. And friends, so are you. You are beautifully clever, beautifully beautiful, mm -hmm. beautifully wonderful. Thank you for sharing this with us today. Yeah, we thank you, you so much. We, we are beautiful. 
<laughs> B-E-A, beautiful, dude. Love you guys so much. You must have an absolutely amazing Sunday, and dude, we will chat bye. soon. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.